Good afternoon, dear time and dear participants. Let me introduce myself to you. I'm Daria Fedotova. I'm a postgraduate student of Kazan Scientific Center of Russian Academy of Sciences. This work is represented on behalf of myself and my colleague Ruslan Kamidulin. The title of my talk is Make Small Crack Puffs in Terms of Plastic Stress Intensity Factor Based on Conventional and Strain Gradient Plasticity. Outline of my talk is the following. First, we'll be given introduction, then is specimens and loading conditions. The next part is material properties and experimental crack paths. The following section is crack tip stress fields. After that, we'll look on mode 1 and mode 2 elastic and plastic stress intensity factor behavior. And finally, we'll be given conclusions. Several words about motivation of my study. The theoretical basis of my work is the gradient theory of plasticity which was elaborated by Fleck at Hutchinson, strain gradient plasticity, and later modified by Gao, MSDP, mechanism-based strain gradient plasticity, and Huang, CMSDP, conventional mechanism-based strain gradient plasticity. In our study, we use conventional mechanism-based strain gradient plasticity theory. This conventional theory based on the Taylor dislocation model with accounting for the geometrically necessary dislocations and, and the statistically stored dislocations. The basic constitution of CMSDP equations includes the plastic strain gradient and the material properties in the form of the yield stress, the strain hardening exponent, and intrinsic material length. The material constitutive equation for CMSDP is implemented in a finite element code. The CMSDP theory was applied to analysis of the experimental mixed mode craft paths in tested CT specimens produced from structural materials different properties. Series of tests for compact tension shear specimens under pure mode 1, mode 2, and full mixed mode was carried out. Compact tension shear specimens produced from two types steel, titanium, and aluminum alloys. The figures show the experimental equipment. The tests were performed on stereohydraulic test system with a maximum capacity of 100 kN at a frequency of 10 Hz and stress ratio 0.1. Specimen sizes, loading condition, and main mechanical properties of tested material are listed in tables on slide. Here you can see experimental crack paths based on the periodically measured increments of crack length in initial mode to loaded CT specimen for the two steels and titanium and aluminum alloys. The upper figures represent the behavior of the crack angles as a function of a dimensional crack length for covering a path for the tested steels and titanium and aluminum alloys under initial mode to loading conditions. Typical fine element meshes for the experimental crack paths and crack tip area in the CTA specimens are illustrated in the bottom figures. In the fine element models, an initial crack tip is defined as a knot with the fine curve T radius 60 nanometers. In order to accurately characterize the influence of the plastic strain gradients, a highly refined mesh is used near the correct tip. Quadrilateral and quadratic plane stress fine elements were used. First of all, I would like to show the distribution of equivalent stresses along the correct extension as a function of the material scale parameter. The stress values are normalized by the yield stress of the material under consideration. The figures show, for example, stress distribution for steel R2M and titanium LO. This graph illustrates the behavior of the normalized effective stresses for R2M steel and titanium alloy at each point of the experimental graph path for initial pure mode 2 and subsequent mixed mode fracture. The numerical results shown in these figures confirm the presence of the effect of the influence of the intrinsic material length parameter on the corrective effective stresses distributions according to the gradient theory of plasticity. The next slide compares the behavior of the effective normalized stresses on crack extension for the two theories of plasticity. One of them is the strain gradient theory of plasticity, and the other corresponds to the classical hutchinson rice rosegreen model. The first two figures are related to pure mode 1 and pure mode 2. Next pictures represent point 2 that correspond to an increment in the crack length of 1 mm after the crack limit, and point 7 correspond to the state before the final fracture. On this graph, the effective stresses on the crack extension under gradient plasticity are an order of magnitude higher than under the classical Herrera theory of plasticity. As moving away from the crack tip, 
The effect of gradient plasticity disappear and solution gradually moves to the state of a classical singularity of the hero type. The bottom row of figures demonstrates the behavior of plastic zones at the corrective according to the strain gradient plasticity theory solution for several successive positions of the corrective on curved path of its growth. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that as the crack grows, the shape of the plastic zone gradually changes from pure mode 2 to a stage close to mode 1. The next slide presents an analysis of the singularity exponent behavior for asymptotic models of the corrective stress fields. Three different domains surrounding the corrective can be identified as a function of asymptotic stress fields. The linear elastic solution, the hair solution, and the MSD plasticity solution. In this figure, line number 1 corresponds to the elastic solution. Line 2 represents the classical plasticity. Line 3 is obtained from the analytical solution of the gradient plasticity. And finally, line 2 corresponds to our numerical result with CMSD plasticity. These graphs are presented as function of the rock hardening exponent for the material structure parameter 5 micrometers. In our calculation, the intrinsic level of the material varied from 1 to 10 microns. The next slide continues the demonstration of the distributions of effective stresses at the corrective according to the result for the strain gradient theory plasticity. In addition to the previous results showing gradual distributions, this figure shows the distributions as a function of the angular coordinate or polar angle. This graph represents angular distribution of the normalized effective stress for the mode 1 and mixed mode with initial pure mode 2 fracture for at each point of the experimental crack paths. Data are presented for the two investigated materials, CR2M and titanium aloe. The material properties are intrinsic parameter 5 micrometers and the ratio for, of R to L 0.04. The change in the shape and size of the normalized effective stress depend on the position of the point on the correct path and the loading conditions. Analysis of stress to excel to parameter behavior plays an important role in considering corrective process with the allowance for this constant effect. Here you can see mode 1 and mixed mode angular distribution of the stress to excelity. The angular distribution of the excelity is computed here using CMSD plasticity for the investigated titanium allow for pure mode 1 as well as for the initial mode 2 and two point of the correct growth path. It can be seen that with respect to pure mode 1, the distribution of the triaxiality parameter for pure mode 2 are almost insensitive to variation in the corrective distance. It should be noted that for initial pure mode 2 loading condition at point 2 of the crack path, after the formation of a king crack and at the end of the crack path close to final point 7 fracture, the pseudo mode 1 scenario is realized at its tip. A clear demonstration of the redistribution process of nonlinear deformation is provided by the contour of local plastic zone at the correct tip, which are shown on the next slide, as example for titanium aloe. The plots are shown for the applied mode 1 and mode 2 and the material length parameter 5 micrometers. It can be noted that for pure mode 1, the plasticity zone is symmetric with respect to the plane of initial crack, while for pure mode 2, this zone is asymmetric. For pure mode 2 loading condition, it can be observed that one side of the crack chip is dominated by tensile stresses and blunts, while the other side is dominated by shear stress and sharpens. At point 2 of the crack path, after the formation of a keen crack, plasticity zones with small asymmetry are observed, and they are indicated by the mixed mode fracture. However, the degree of asymmetry is not large, as it depends on the plastic properties of the material. At the end of the crack path close to the final fracture, 0.7, despite the fact that an indicated covalinear crack has already formed in the city space and loading by shear forces. A pseudo mode 1 scenario is realized at its tip. The information on the distribution of elastic plastic stresses presented in the previous slide was necessary to calculate the parameter of fracture resistance in the form of stress intensity factors. Determination of stress intensity factors was one of the main purposes of my work. Next figure shows the comparison of the numerical distributions for the equivalent elastic, plastic strain intensity factor according to the classical hair solution, and new plastic strain intensity factor LDP for each of the experimental crack paths in the CTS pass mass for the study steels and titanium and aluminum alloys.
The left row of the figure shows the strain intensity factor distribution as a function of the normalized crack length for pure mode 1, while the right row corresponds to the initial pure mode 2 with subsequent cycle mixed mode fracture. Figures A and C clearly illustrate the influence of the plastic properties of materials on the dependence of the elastic and plastic strain intensity factors on the crack length using the example of mode 1. First, to touch tiles which have the same elastic properties, the dependencies of the elastic strain intensity factors on the crack length in the citrus sample can set. On the contrary, for the same steels and under the same loading conditions, the distribution of plastic strain intensity factors differs significantly from each other because of the influence of the plastic properties of the materials. Differences in the behavior of plastic stress intensity factors is normalized coordinates are most clearly seen. The upper row on the slide shows the mode 1 dependencies between the normalized classical hair sieves and new plastic strain intensity factors SDP and dimensional crack length, while the bottom row corresponds to the behavior of these parameters under the mixed mode state normalized by the pure mode to initial corrective state. It should be noted that with respect to classical hardware solutions, the dependencies of the normalized new plastic strain intensity factor SDP for pure mode 1 and mixed mode with initial pure mode 2 fit into one common curve for all tested materials. In our study, we have got such approximation questions for each covalinear crack path of the tested structural materials. This trend processes for all investigated materials, loading conditions, and for different values of the intrinsic material life parameter. The main advantage of the new strain intensity factors according to the gradient theory of plasticity in comparison with the classical hydroplastic strain intensity factor is its sensitive to change in the material structure scale parameter. Conclusions Series of tests for CT specimens under pure mode 1, mode 2, and subsequent mixed mode was carried out. As a result of the experiment, covering a correct path for a sample smash of 448 and R trans steels, titanium and aluminum alloys were obtained. The corrective stress fields along the covalinear crack path are obtained. It is found from numerical analysis of experimental crack path that differences between effective dimensional stresses for conventional classical hardware solution and SDP theories result approximately about one order of magnitude. Nonlinear stress intensity factor solution for classical hardware plasticity and mechanisms by strain gradient plasticity for different experimental crack paths are obtained. It is found that the main advantage of the new strain intensity effect according to the gradient theory of plasticity in comparison with the classical higher plasticity strain density factor is its sensitive to change in the material structure scale parameter. Thank you for your attention.